Okay. Um, hey everybody, this is Rock Paper Mario, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. In the last part, we did two little side jobby things. And in this part, we're going to go sailing with the King of Red Lions. Sailing for adventure on the big blue wet thing. <laughs> okay, oh god, no. That's probably going to be the theme of this LP. Press A and climb in. <laughs> Why'd you hesitate so quickly? Come next to me and press A to climb in. Okay, King Neptune. Um, basically, um... Well, we're going sailing. That's probably press the sign or sail and press that to sail. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but see that yellow arrow at like the back of your boat. Basically, what you want to do is be as aligned as with that as possible to be able to sail as fast as fastly as quickly as possible. Yeah, do you want to read like Ghostbusters was like the theme of Luigi's Mansion? This is probably going to be Muppet Treasure Island. I wonder how far we can get in this episode actually. Oh, I don't know. Oh well, we're going to like make a pit stop at this island up here. Um, so, what have you guys been up to? I don't know what I've been up to. I don't know, what games could you be playing? You're probably playing like Metroid Other M and Mario Galaxy 2. Oh, and probably Professor Layton, because the new Professor Layton game is out in America, but it's not out here yet for like another month. So like, I'm really annoyed. I love Professor Layton, that's one of my- because I'm a sucker for a good story. And I'm also a sucker for puzzles. Like, I'm so obsessed with puzzles that the, when, when the last Professor Layton game came out, I got it on a Friday, and I had completed every puzzle by the Monday, like, over the weekend. That's how obsessed I am with, like, not letting puzzles beat me. So, yeah, if you come across this island on your way to that big mountain over there, which is where you're going, you'll come across these guys. So, if you talk to them... Yeah! Mighty fine boat you got there, Bob. You must be searching for the treasure on the seafloor too, aren't you? Ha 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 You won't get any from us, Bob. Not likely, bruh. <laughs> Let me ask you something real quick. Who wanders around on a fishless sea? I'll tell you who, Bob. Only pirates, monsters, and treasure hunters like ourselves. And maybe some other things that I've never heard of. <laughs> well, they seem to agree. Oh, look, he has, like, tan lines. I've never noticed that before. He has, like, tan lines on his body. How much more detail could they go into in this game? You know, with all the weak island dwellers who never leave their shores, I'm surprised to see such a tiny little guy out here. I like your style, Bob. I feel like I've known you my whole life. So hey, Bob, tell you what. As one treasure hunter to another, I'll give you this. Want a bottle of Malibu? That'll go down mighty fine right now. You'll definitely be needing it if you want to haul up treasure. Come on, take it. I won't take no for an answer. I also won't take no no for nah. Just grab it, Bob. <laughs> you got a treasure chart. Another one. We can't even use them yet. We already have, like, three. When you open this chart, a place where treasure lies will be lit up. Sail to that area and then use the chart to find treasure. First press that to open your sea chart, and then press that to look up there. You search for treasure chart, yeah, you basically you need grappling hooks, but we don't have one. <laughs> we'll never be able to search for treasure. Alright, little treasure buddy, best of luck to all of us, yeah. Yeah, see ya, man. Um, well, we'll take a pit stop on this island. I don't know how much time I'm going to have, but we'll take a pit stop on here anyway. I think I can go up as far as, like, a half an I, mean, I think I can go up as far as, like, 35 minutes or something. Basically, if you come onto this island, you'll see there are, like, weird statues of things, which we haven't seen yet, but we will soon, and there's, like, this big dome in the middle. If you chopped grass here, then you can... Well, no, you have to put away your sword first. You can, like, crawl around like an idiot. You can go in here, into this little hole, and then you can drop down into this hole. Then go into the hole. <laughs> Sorry. And you get in here, and this, pla this place is, like... The start of Metroid Prime 2. Well, it's not really. I don't know, all these things hanging off the ceiling, that's what it reminds me of. Doing Metroid Prime 2 at the start when, like, all the Galactic Federation troopers are, like, encased up in the ceilings and stuff like that. Oh, and what are these things? Well, they look like the statues that were out on, um, out on top of the island. And they drop this stuff, which is pretty useless in my opinion. You'll see why later. Um, you got Red Chew Jelly. Basically, you can bring this stuff to, like, a potion maker on Windfall Island, and he'll make, like, potions for you. But it... Like, pretty soon in the game, they become absolutely useless, because there's an easier way to get even better potions, so I don't know why you'd bother collecting chew jelly. I just don't. I have never done it. I've never gotten a potion brewed by that guy. But you don't even have to fight the guys, because if you come here, there's a spiny chest, which I've already opened, and I didn't even say anything, because I did it so fast, because I just do it subconsciously, because I've played this game so many times, and you get the four piece of heart, which means you've completed another heart container, and your life energy has increased by one heart. Yeah, this is one of the only game, Zelda games where you can have like an, an extra heart container other than the first, like the initial ones you're given um, by before you actually fight, even fight the first boss. 
Um, I know you can in Majora's Mask, jeez, you can have like 6 or 7 before you, other hard containers before you fight the last boss. You can get like 12 or something. As far as I remember, I haven't played that game in ages. But you can get like 10 pieces of heart or more, you can get, well, I don't know, you can get loads of heart containers before you even go to fight the first boss, so... Um, let's go. But you can only get one in this game. I'll see you, oh, see you buddies. Um, yeah, so what we're heading for is we're heading for that, um, big mountain. Um, turning is pretty slow. If you want to turn sharply, what you do is press R to jump and turn while you're jumping, and he'll turn sharply like that as soon as he lands. Um, if you see that thing there, they're pretty useless. Well, that's Beetle's boat if you need to buy stuff, but you see that platform? That's pretty useless, really. Only some of them are useful. And see that raft? They're pretty useless as well. None of them are useful. Sorry. Um, so yeah. As you can see, this is the whole point of this game. This is why I was explaining to you. Basically, you need to sail from island to island, and this is why, as I said, you can't. This is the only Zelda game where you can't, um, in theory, swim indefinitely like you can in every other Zelda game. Once you get the ability to swim, um, if you were able to swim indefinitely in this game, you could just swim from island to island without having to use the boat at all. So, oh, what's that? Well, this is the big mountain we're going to. There, on the horizon. That is our destination, Dragon Roost Island, and I talk like Sam the American Eagle from Muppets. Well, this is Dragon Roost Island, and this is the f like this is like the fourth place we've been already. Like they really, like the f beginning of this game, like the first parts of this game. Is, well, I better explain that after. High atop this island's peak lived the spirit of the skies, a great dragon by the name of Valu. Well, here we are. Good job getting us here, King. You must go to this dragon and request from a jewel called Din's Pearl. Sounds interesting. Hmm, sounds interesting. Ask the people of the Rito tribe who inhabit this island to know how to see the dragon. Oh, and thanks for coming. Oh, sure, why not? I know just how to do that. Oh, I almost forgot. Just wait a moment. Wait one cotton pick a minute. This is the Wind Wanker. Or wind Waker. It's a Wind Wanker. It looks like it says wanker. It is a baton of sorts that has been used you long ago when people played music in prayer to the gods. In those days, simply using it allowed one to borrow the power of the gods, but I do not know if it still works. Even so, I might be of some use to you. Perhaps you should try using it. Um, yes I will. Well, look, Link's like, how do I know what to do? <laughs> First conduct in three, four time. Do not touch that, just try and match written by tilting that. <laughs> Yeah, this is the first Zelda game where you actually had to like think about rhythm when you were playing, if you were playing the instruments, because like, in Ocarina of Time Majora's Mask, you only had to think about like what buttons you were playing, um, and in Zelda games before that, you just had to press like A, and he would play his ocarina, or the flute, or whatever, or the um, harp of ages, or whatever, so this is the first game where you had to actually think about rhythm. Um, and they kind of carried that on in Twilight Princess with the rhythm of the wolf howling and stuff like that. That's it, Harry. That was not bad for your first time using the Wind Waker. Not bad at all. You can also conduct with it in 6-4 time by tilting that. You would do well to remember that. Yeah, we would do well to remember that about like three quarters of the way through the game. You received the legendary Wind Whacker. <laughs> what? The legendary Wind Whacker. The legendary Weed Whacker. By using this magical conductor's baton, you can suppress a burp into your body so it doesn't come out onto the LPing track. Um, you can borrow the power of the gods. Set it to that and use it. Yeah, just like every other item in this goddamn game, you set it to that. And you're wasting our time. We're up to like we only have like five minutes left, and we have to get all the way, climb up all the way into that stupid mountain. Fifteen men coming round a mountain top. Well, maybe I should like read this sign. It says. Danger! Do not attack the Goron special crop. Yeah, basically the explosive fruit or the Goron special crop or whatever um, is bombs. Bombs, flowers. Uh, oh, look, it landed like on the rock. Um, yeah, that that t ten rupees is useless now because, as you can see in this game, the most you can carry for the moment is um, two hundred rupees, which is not not too shabby, as the snowman would say in Courage the Cowardly Dog. They're that snowman. Oh, I love those episodes. There are like two episodes with the snowman in them, and I love both of them. They're brilliant. And, and he talks like Sean Connery, which I always thought was really funny. And there's one episode where he goes like, hmm, not too shabby. 
What was I talking about? I was talking about something before I got interrupted by the King of Red Lions. Oh yeah, what are you guys been what have you guys been playing or doing? I'm just waiting to go back to college and I've been playing um well I've been playing this and I've been playing Pokemon Yellow, but I've also been playing um Metroid Other M and I've been playing Jump Down Here to be create a shortcut when you want to get back up without having to go the long way. Um I've also been playing I don't know what. I've been playing Pokemon Yellow in this, but I've also been playing Metroid Other M. That's really the only other game I've been playing because I re oh well there's a familiar face because um I'm waiting for other games to come out. I'm waiting for the new um, Hotel Dusk game to come out, and I'm waiting for the new Professor Layton game to come out. Harry, Harry, is that you? Is that you, Jeremy Irons? It is. I'm pleased to see you. Okay. I must say, you've travelled far for one with no wings. And your sister, is she? Yeah, let's not talk about that, buddy. Is that so? Well, don't worry too much. I'm sure she'll hang in there. I have an idea, Harry. Would you like to meet our chieftain? I've told my people here about you, and all of us Rito are very concerned. I'm concerned that I'm certain the chieftain will befriend you, and lend you the aid of our airy. It's settled then. I'll fly ahead and let everyone know you're coming. Come inside, Harry. Come inside. Come with me, and you shall see a place called Candied Island. Who needs Candied Island? It's safe for out the dogs. But there ain't no streams of sodi pop, no tripping down the rocks. It's dangerous and risky, but adventurous and free. Adventure that's the life for me. The life of season and lemonade sea. Doesn't sound that good to me. The misadventures of Flapjack. Um, so let's go in here. I think we can squeeze this in. It shouldn't take three minutes to talk to these birds. Oh, look at him flying around in the air. And Chieftain's like... Look, he's like holding his iron up going, Get back down here! Get back down here! Well, have you discovered the cause of the Great Father's anger? <laughs> no, Worf. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. That voice sounds like Worf from Star Trek. Ah, so you are Harry, are you? And I am Weasel. Quill has told me all about you. Oh, so Quill is the postman's name. A troubling tale, indeed. I insist that you let us know if there is anything we can do to help you. We shall do everything in our power to assist you. Oh, well, that's great. Thanks. I need to hear that. However, in the meantime, we have a problem of our own to deal with. The plumbing's kind of backed up, and we can't find our plunger. I believe you have something which belongs to our boss. I believe you got something that belongs to my boss. When you arrived at the island, did you know it's the raging dragon perched atop the mountain? As you can see, we of the Rito tribe are profoundly connected to the sky. We make our livings on the airways. We do so by the graces of the Sky Spirit Valu. When a Rito reaches adulthood, he or she journeys to the top of Dragon Roost to receive a scale from the Great Dragon. It is this scale that enables me to get this video in under the time limit. Recently, however, the once gentle Valu has grown violent and unpredictable. Sadly, we can no longer approach him. If this continues, the fledgings who are of age will never be able to receive scales from Valu and Dragon Roost. They will remain wingless, and in time our very way of life will be threatened. As Chieftain of Dorito, my first responsibility is to solve this problem. My apologies, but I must ask you to wait for our assistance until this is done. Will you do so? Um, yeah, sure. I have no problem waiting. My sister is just incarcerated in an evil prison. Chieftain, what do you think of consulting Harry with regards to your son, Prince Komali? As you can see, Harry is a gallant young lad. I feel certain that Prince Komali would open his heart to him and speak freely of his fears and worries. Chieftain's like, say what? That may be. Let me be direct. My son Komali is of the age to earn his wings. Yet he is weak in some ways, and in light of the current situation, he may just give up on ever getting them. What say you? Will you be share some of your courage with my son? Will you meet with my son? Um, yeah, I don't have any choice. It didn't even give me a choice. I thank you. We shall do our best to solve our problem as quickly as possible, so that we may better help you with yours. I have something I wish for you to give to my son. I, I believe you have some which belongs to my boss. A young girl named Medley is holding it for me. Will you find her and take it? I am counting on you. Um, see you, Chieftain. Thanks for the help and all. You useless bitch. Here, Harry, take this with you. Who knows, it might come in handy. Um, you've got the gay bag, the gay looking bag, and on that note I've got to go because I probably am going to end up having to fast forward some of this, so um, this is Rock Paper Mario thanking you for watching this part of Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, and the next part we'll go do some stuff. Um, so see you next time.